Hello guys and welcome once again with another video. Here we are going to discuss SLO 8 and 12 which forms the part of FRKM final SBA question set. The regulation says there will be seven questions related to leading the ED shift and the components tested are as given over here. Patient flow management, risk management, clinical governance, serious adverse events, investigation tool and complaint management. We all should be familiar with how a complaint is managed and a serious incident is investigated in the NHS. I would recommend doing the ELFH modules on serious investigation and complaint management which will give you an idea about how to go about doing the complaint management and serious investigation. Let us not waste further time and look at question number one in this specialty learning outcome. You are handed over a department of 40 bed, which has 100% occupancy. There are 35 wa patients waiting to be seen in, and you feel the department is overcrowded. This pattern of high flow has been seen for the last two months. Your town is served by another hospital at 45 minutes drive with its own ED. In order to reduce crowding, which action will not be recommended? Take your 10 second pause, then we will discuss the answer. So now let us look at the options given over here. Front loading the investigations, routinely monitoring the total occupancy, aiming for overall hospital occupancy of 85%, ambulance diversions if needed, public health campaigns to discourage ED use. So out of these, which one is not recommended? And the correct answer over here is option number five, that is public health campaigns to discourage ED use. This has shown that many people feel the guilt of using the system and when they have a genuine emergency they tend to avoid coming to the emergency department so therefore public health campaigns to discourage ED use is not recommended rest all are recommended I'm gonna put a link down below go over that document thoroughly that will help in understanding the exit block and the patient flow through the ED let us now look at question number two for several months, the department is facing the issue of overcrowding. You have raised concerns on many occasions. Exit block has been recognized as number one reason for this phenomena. What would not be recommended in the long term to deal with the issues of overcrowding? Take your 10 seconds, look at the options. We will discuss the answer soon. So the options here are manage demand by increasing physical capacity. That means if it's a 30 bedded ED, let's make it 50 bedded. If it's a 500 bedded hospital, let's make it 600 bedded hospital. Developing ambulatory care pathways, developing streaming and rapid assessment process, facilitate early discharge from inpatient. Senior clinician should undertake brief safety round every two to four hours. So what is not recommended? And the answer over here is number one manage demand by increasing physical capacity the reason is yes if you do increase the capacity of your ED from 30 beds to 40 45 beds for the short term it will be useful but again in the long run you come back to the same point rest all are correct let us now look at question number three on the exit hallway of your ED towards the ward is a room to store medical waste the doors of the storage do not close and more often remains open obstructing the way. You identify it as a potential risk for the path and you identify it as a potential risk for patients and staff as it is blocking the path and opens on its own with wind. Your ED lead has registered it as a potential risk on the system. What are the four possible options when responding to risks in general? Look at the options, take your 10 seconds, then we'll look at the answer. The option seems to be quite similar, but see, when you're managing a risk, you either first of all, avoid the risk to happen. You either avoid. Secondly, if there is a problem, accept it, accept the risk. So there are two ways, avoid and accept. You can transfer the risk to somebody else, some other department to take care of it. 
or when you have found a solution, mitigate the risk. You can make your own mnemonic ATAM, MATA, ATMA, whatever is suitable for you. Avoid, accept, transfer or mitigate. Let us now look at question number four. A risk assessment matrix used by risk managers is charted as a product of likelihood ratios versus the severity of hazard. It is given over here in the question stem. What it could be used to assess all of these except look at the options. We will discuss the answer soon. So here the options are identify hazard, yes it can help in identifying the hazard, risk analysis, absolutely, determining the risk impact, yes, mitigation methods, no, it doesn't tell you what actions you will take, prioritizing the risk, yes, so a risk assessment matrix tells you, it identifies, it does a risk analysis, determines the risk impact and prioritizes the risk. However, it doesn't tell you the mitigation methods. Let us now look at answer num question number five. You're doing a training session for juniors on clinical governance. What is best way clinical governance is described? This answer, everybody should get it right. Look at the options and we will come back to the answer soon. Okay, the options are NHS organization is accountable to improve the quality of services. NHS organization has effective way to handle complaints. NHS organization is responsible for community safety. NHS organization has measures in place to deal with risk alone. NHS organization is geared up to care for all patients they receive. The correct answer is option number one. In short, clinical governance is defined as every NHS organization has a process where it evaluates and improves its standards of care against a set benchmark and NHS organizations are accountable to the public. They create an environment in which the clinical care flourishes. So this is the definition. You can memorize the definition but I've just given you a brief understanding of what clinical governance is. Let us now look at question number six. You have been investigating an adverse event which has been reported after obtaining statements of people involved you are with the committee members for brainstorming. You contemplate to use the Ishikawa diagram to identify the root cause what is not included in this tool. So Ishikawa diagram is the fishbone diagram which is used to identify the problem you will use it in your quality improvement projects as well you will identify the problem then you'll try to find the causes and which one is not included is the thing which you have to identify. Take a 10 second pause, we'll look at the answers. So the options given over here are materials, measurement, methods, manpower, threats, machine, environment. It includes 5M, machine, methods, material, manpower measurement and 1e environment a threat is used in a SWOT analysis strength weakness opportunities and threat so that is not there in this tool let us now look at question number seven the 5y method to investigate the cause and effect is used to identify the causes of untoward incident in the department the report is generated and shared learning is made what is not considered an aim to conduct such an analysis? Look at the options. We'll discuss the answer soon. So the options given over here are prevent a similar event across the whole industry, identify the personnel who is actually responsible for the event, provide support to the staff, provide support to the patient and family, promote shared learning with safe practices the answer in this scenario is to identify the personnel who is actually responsible for the event this is not recommended or this is not the aim to conduct an analysis you don't have to identify or blame someone that produces a blame culture that then people are not 
interested or motivated to report an error to the patient and to the department as a whole. Let us now look at question number 8. A patient is unhappy with the way he has been treated in your department and has written a letter to complaints department. The complaint is acknowledged by the department within three working days with regards to the local resolution of the complaint who possesses overall responsibility. Look at the options. We will discuss the answer soon. So the options are clinical lead of ED, the concerned healthcare provider involved, the chief executive, the chief medical officer, patient advisory and liaison services. Remember, when somebody writes a complaint, you need to know the complaint procedure. Complaint can be done by the patient himself or the next of kin if a damage has happened and it should be done within 12 months of the event. When the complaint is received, the acknowledgement has to be made by the patient advisory liaison services as soon as possible within three working days. Then the complaint is sent to the risk manager for risk assessment and sent to the concerned department and they collate the reports and prepare a statement. The statement has the aim of the complaint management is local resolution. The complaint letter is compiled and sent to the chief executive officer who will go over it and sign it and the complaint uh, response is sent to the patient within 28 working days. So the chief executive officer is holds the overall responsibility of the complaint. If patient is unhappy with the response then the patient is invited to have a face to face discussion and again we are aiming for local resolution. There is an independent complaint advisory support available for the patient if he is unhappy. It's not a legal advisory system because the moment he seeks legal advice, complaint process stops. It becomes a legal procedure. Independent complaint advisory support is available. Then if still he is not happy, there is an ombudsman in the community which is appointed to look at the complaint and helps the patient in supporting the patient in filing a complaint. If still the result obtained is not in favor of the patient or the patient is still unhappy, he can go to the parliamentary members uh, or the health minister, health secretary. There is a lot to read. Go on ELFH, do the complaint management, serious incident, clinical governance modules and uh, good luck for your exams. Stay safe, stay blessed. Peace.